Today I want to be speaking from a message I wrote about extensively. And I think it's one of the wisest things I ever wrote. The unclean spirit with purpose. The unclean spirit with purpose. I went into a certain chapter of it. I think it's chapter 6. And I said wisdom from the unclean spirit. The fact that an unclean spirit can have wisdom, truth about it is that this unclean spirit demonstrated some wisdom which many Christians don't have. Jesus Christ speaking about this demon said in Luke chapter 11 and the verse number 24, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through the dry places seeking rest and finding none he said i will return into my house whence i came out and when he cometh he findeth it swept and garnished then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there and the last state of the man is worse than the first when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. You would think that this unclean spirit left of its own accord, but other translations would tell you that when the unclean spirit is cast out of a man, because normally a demon will have to be cast out before it will vacate its its, its place or its abode. So this demon was cast out, and the demon went through dry places, He went through places looking for rest. And he went through every place and every place was dry. Finally, the demon said, I'm going to go back to my house from whence I came. And when he came back to his place, he found that the place was swept. The place was garnished. And this demon told himself something. He said, if I dwell here alone, the forces and the factors that drove me out will come and cast me out again. I know how I will survive in this place for a long time and accomplish my purpose. I will go, I will take seven other spirits who are more wicked than me and we will come in and dwell in this man and his state to be worse. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about a demon that experienced a recession. There was a recession. There was a movement back. There was a drifting away. There was a losing of territory. This demon had lost territory. This demon was there, and all of a sudden, his status has changed. The demon was no longer in charge. The demon was a pauper. He was no longer dwelling in the place that he belonged to. He was now moving around dry places. And moving around those dry places, the demon said, I have experienced a recession, but I'm going to return to where I was coming from. This demon is behaving like the, like the prodigal son. So the demon now returns. And when he returns to the place, he finds out that there is a restoration. He saw that the place where he had gone to was swept. It was garnished. There was more than enough there. Everything was available everything was provided the place was nicer than he left it before so we are talking about a recession and then the demon returns and there is a restoration and the demon now decided that if i had a recession if i was ejected or evicted and i have returned and there is a restoration i cannot be greedy and enjoy everything that is here on my own because if I stay in this swept place and this garnished place and I want to enjoy all by myself, very soon I'll be cast out again. So I'm going to look for seven demons, more wicked than me. And we are going to come in and dwell in this man and destroy the man forever. Ladies and gentlemen, all I'm telling you is this. There is more than enough in the world, more than enough in Africa, more than enough in Ghana, more than enough in your ministry more than enough in your industry more than enough in any area of life that you operate in don't spend all your time keeping others out don't spend all your time selfishly selfishly trying to just consume everything around you being a monopolist 
who will not allow anybody to coexist with you. And people, that is what is destroying us as a people. The demon said, I'm going to go and I'm going to bring seven demons who are more wicked than myself. And we will dwell in this man together and destroy him. When I look at the philosophy of this demon, I remember Isaiah chapter 11 from the verse number 6, the scripture from which I took my message on the love revolution. And in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah began to speak and he said, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamp and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. He said, the calf, the young lion, the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall feed and their young ones shall lie down together. And he said, the sucking child shall play, shall play on the hole of the asp and the wind child shall put his hand on the cockatrice then. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. The earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The wolf and the lamb shall dwell together. The leopard and the kid shall lie down together. The calf, young lion, fatling together, and a little child will lead them. Then we see the cow and the bear are feeding. Their young ones are lying down together. The lion is eating straw like the ox. The sucking child is playing on the hole of the asp or the, horn, the, or the Egyptian cobra, horned viper. The wind child is putting his hand in the hole of the snake. In all the holy mountain of God, nobody is destroying anybody. Then the earth is full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Going back to the story of the demon, I'm going to be working with the demon story and then this imagery on the holy mountain of God. You come to many of the things we do as human beings and this kind of serene atmosphere is not possible. Seven demons more wicked than this other demon could dwell together. A lion and a lamb can dwell together. A wolf lamb, leopard, kid, calf, young lion, fatling together. A little child is leading them. Cow and the bear are feeding. Two human beings who are brothers cannot live together. A man and a wife who are human beings cannot live together. Everybody wants to control a territory. Two pastors cannot stay in the same environment. Both of them full of the Holy Ghost. Preaching the Bible. Sometimes carrying the same title, evangelist. They cannot do well together. Two musicians cannot do well together. Two footballers cannot exist on the same playing pitch. So what happens is, we are antagonists of one another. And that is why whenever we gather and we are praying, Lord, we need a breakthrough. God said you cannot have a breakthrough because the only place where I commanded the blessing is when brethren dwell together in unity. When that oil of unity comes, then I bless them. Ladies and gentlemen, by the time a demon goes to bring seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, I will show you this. From the imagery in the book of Isaiah. And then the narration of the encounter of this demon. He said, he brought in seven other spirits and they dwelled in the man. So first of all, let's look at dwelling together. When you say dwelling together, it means you are going to share a territory. I have seen situations where a church exists. When another church comes to town... The older church prays against the new one. But this demon went and brought seven. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, seven. And they were not just seven ordinary, seven more anointed. I mean, listen, it's just like you having a church in, let's say, Sukula. And you go and bring Dr. Menso Table to come and start a church next door to you and live around you. And then you go and bring 
ben him to come and exist and you give him a meeting place around you i mean it's, it's just like you are a pastor and you go and bring bishop td jakes to be your associate by the time he preaches one message you are finished but i like a dick demon said you know what i'm bringing seven demons more wicked than him myself there's more than enough room for us more than enough provision for us ladies and gentlemen there is more than enough space for all of us because the earth is the laws and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein watch this our competition is senseless our antagonism is meaningless our coalition against one another is unnecessary we fight over nothing because the earth is the loss and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein there's nothing you have which you did not receive every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above and it comes from the father of life in whom is no variableness no shadow of turning let me ask you a question after all how much food can you eat